Thank you, David and Jessica. The next speaker is John Smart. I met him in 2016 when he headed up the Ways of Working at Barclays, an organization founded in the year 1634, which predates the invention of paper cash. In his role, John had an amazing reputation of doing things in a way very different than the traditional norms inside of an organization that has one of the most highly evolved bureaucracies on the planet, having had centuries to perfect itself. I mentioned in my opening remarks that his definition of DevOps, of better value, sooner, safer, and happier, is one of my favorite definitions, and I'm so delighted that this phrase has been uttered so many times on the DevOps Enterprise stage, showing just how impactful his work has been on this community. This is one of the many reasons why I'm so happy that he's on the programming committee of this conference. Sooner, Safer, and Happier is also the title of his amazing new book coming out next month. It's a fantastic book, and I think it fills some now obvious gaps in the management literature. And holy cow, I had so much admire the quote from Dave Snowden on his book cover. He is now partner of Business Agility at Deloitte, and I'm so excited to have him share his perspectives on what we now require from both technology and business leaders. Please welcome John Smart. Frustrated. Tearful. Demoralized. Miserable. Scared. Frightened. Roadblocked. Alone. Hi, my name is John, and I'm going to talk today about behavior and how it is the biggest lever for better outcomes, specifically how leadership behavior is the biggest lever for better value, sooner, safer and happier. This talk is aimed at leaders at all levels. This is not about other people as leaders. This is about you as a leader. So this talk is for you and it's for leaders at all levels. And in this talk, I'm gonna share some anti-patterns and patterns for leading for better outcomes. First of all, let's have a look at what, what's going on here and what has changed. So unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that the world of work has fundamentally changed. We've gone from the age of oil and mass production. This is the Ford factory in Detroit, this is around about uh, 19, 1910, 1920. Um, we've come from the age of oil and mass production. This is what organized human endeavor used to be predominantly. It was mass producing identical widgets, identical things. It could be making wheels for the car, making a gas tank or a petrol tank for the car. It was repetitive work and it was knowable. If something went wrong, you knew how to fix it. Now, We've gone from the age of oil and mass production to the age of digital. And in using these words, I'm quoting Carlotta Perez, who wrote about the 50 to 60 year repeating cycles of technology led revolution. In the age of digital, this is like going from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age. We have new tools. We have a new means of production. And this work is unique. It is not repetitive. It is knowledge work and it is unknowable. When writing software, you don't write the same software 100,000 times on an assembly line. You write it once, the computer runs it 100,000 times. Every time you write software, it's unique. Whenever we create a technology, an information technology product, it's unique. Whenever you install that information technology product, even if it's a big vendor system, that is still a unique environment. The work is fundamentally unknowable and it involves collaboration. In the Detroit factory, in Ford, in the early 1900s, more than 50 languages were spoken. The reason that didn't matter was because people were not speaking to each other. They didn't need to have a common language when you're doing the same task day in and day out. Clearly, as you can see in these photos now, collaboration is super important. 
the pace of change is getting faster. So this was a survey, 3,300 people were asked the question, what's the difference between a digital environment and a traditional one? The number one answer is the pace of business, its speed, its rate of change. The number two answer was culture, mindset, learning, risk taking. The number three answer was flexible working, collaboration and transparency, people collaborating and working together. And the fourth answer was productivity and continuous improvement. So the world has got faster. In terms of the 14th State of Agile report, which came out in May 2020, yet again, it finds that culture is the biggest challenge to better ways of working. Four of the top five reasons are behavioral. Reason number one is the biggest challenge is general organizational resistance to change. Reason number two is not enough leadership participation. Number three, organization culture is at odds with agile values and inadequate management support and sponsorship at number four. So again, four of the top five impediments to better ways of working are behavioral. So in this talk, we're gonna look at some common anti-patterns and patterns. Um, I like this language around anti-patterns and patterns because there is no one size fits all. For emergent work, there's no such thing as best practice. However, there are approaches which will give you a tailwind and there are approaches which will give you a headwind. The anti-patterns will give you a headwind. They will make it harder for you to be more successful. The patterns will give you a tailwind and they will make it easier on the whole. Your mileage